I shall now announce certain additional measures. There are about eight additional measures and I think all of them are uh, quite important. So I request your patience for uh, some more time. The first announcement relates to borrowing in call and notice money markets by scheduled commercial banks. The extent regulatory guidelines prescribe prudential limits for outstanding borrowing in call and notice money markets for scheduled commercial banks. With a view to providing greater flexibility for managing their liquidity, it has been decided that scheduled commercial banks, exclu excluding small finance banks, can set their own limits for borrowing in call and notice money markets within the prescribed prudential limits for interbank liabilities. Second announcement relates to widening the scope of framework for resolution of stressed assets. Compromise settlements is recognized as a resolution mechanism in respect of non-performing assets, that is NPAs, under the prudential framework of the Reserve Bank, which is currently applicable to scheduled commercial banks and select NBFCs. It is proposed to issue comprehensive guidelines on comprehensive settlements and on technical write-offs, which will now be made applicable to all regulated entities, including the cooperative banks. Further, it is also proposed to rationalize the existing prudential norms on restructuring of borrower accounts affected by natural calamities. The next announcement relates to a default loss guarantee arrangement in digital banking, popularly what is known as the FLDG in digital banking. The Reserve Bank had issued the regulatory framework for digital lending in August-September last year. With a view to further promoting responsible innovation and prudent risk management, it has been decided to issue guidelines on default loss guarantee arrangements in digital lending. This will further facilitate orderly development of digital lending ecosystem and enhance credit penetration in the economy. Uh, the next announcement relates to priority sector lending targets for primary urban cooperative banks. The Reserve Bank has undertaken several initiatives in recent years to strengthen the urban cooperative bank sector, that is the UCB sector, as well as to deepen financial inclusion. Such initiatives include revision of the priority sector lending targets for UCBs in 2020. While revising the priority sector lending targets, a glide path up to March 2024 was provided for a non-disruptive transition to achieve the revised targets. While a number of UCBs, that is urban cooperative banks, have met the required milestones as on March 2023, a need has arisen to ease the implementation challenges faced by the other UCBs. It has therefore been decided to extend the time frame for achieving the targets by two more years, that is up to March 2026. Further, urban cooperative banks, UCBs, which have met the targets as on 31st March 2023, shall be suitably incentivized. The next announcement relates to rationalization of the licensing framework for authorized persons under Foreign Exchange Management Act, that is FEMA. The licensing framework for authorized persons issued under FEMA was last reviewed in March 2006. Keeping in view the developments, including progressive liberalization under FEMA over the last several years and to effectively meet meet the emerging requirements of the rapidly growing Indian economy, it has been decided to rationalize and simplify the licensing framework for these authorized persons. This is expected to improve the efficiency in delivery of foreign exchange facilities uh, to various segments of users, including common persons, tourists, and businesses. Uh, the next announcement relates to expanding the scope and reach of e-rupee vouchers. At present, purpose-specific e-rupee digital vouchers are issued by the banks. It is now proposed to expand the scope and reach of 
e rupee vouchers by permitting non bank prepaid payment instruments issuers that is ppi issuers to issue e rupee vouchers it is also proposed to enable issuance of e rupee vouchers on behalf of individuals and to simplify the process of issuance redemption and a few other uh, you know aspects of the current uh, framework these measures will make the benefits of e rupee digital voucher accessible to a wider set of users and further deepen the penetration of digital payments in the country next announcement relates to streamlining the bharat bill payment system processes and membership criteria bharat bill payment system that is bbps is operational since august 2017 the scope of bbps was further expanded in december 2022 that is december last year to further enhance the efficiency of the bbps system and to encourage greater participation it is proposed to streamline the process flow of transactions and membership criteria for operating units uh, the next announcement and i think that's the last one relates to internationalizing issuance and acceptance of the rupee cards rupee debit and credit cards issued by the banks in india are gaining increased acceptance abroad it has now been decided to permit issuance of rupee prepaid forex cards by the banks this will expand the payment options for indians traveling abroad further rupee cards will also be enabled for issuance in foreign jurisdictions these measures will expand the reach and acceptance of rupee cards globally